Hi everyone, welcome to our services for this weekend. And uh, you know, if it's your first time joining us, we thank you for making time out to be here with us and to all the FCBC members. Glad to have you connected with us. You know, I don't know if you've got somebody beside you or I don't know how you're watching this, but if there's somebody else around you watching the interview, why don't you turn to that person and say this, say, welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church, all right? You can put it on a live chat as well. And I think it's always great as we come together, we worship the Lord together and we draw near to His presence and just ask Him for more of His outpouring in our lives, in our nation, in every single thing that we do. So why don't we stand up right now wherever we are, if it's possible for you, and why don't you just lift up your hands in a posture of receiving and I just want to speak a word of blessing over all of us as we enter this time of worship today. So let's just put our hands in that posture and let's pray right now. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. We know that your word tells us that this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So we receive of your spirit in our lives today. We pray that as we worship in our homes or wherever we are right now, Lord, let your presence come and be manifested. Let your glory be manifested in that place. Lord, whatever it is that we're carrying, we know that you can trade our sorrows for joy. Lord, we know that you turn our mourning into dancing. Lord, we know that you come and you restore our spirits. So we receive all this. And today, as we give you all the praise, Lord, we want to come before you as who we are, transformed by your grace in our lives. So Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Today, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 So let's come, let's worship the Lord and give Him all the praise. Pastor Roger. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Truly, despite of all the circumstances around us, God still deserves all our true worship. Amen. So let's do that. Give Him praise. And this is no performance. Lord, I pray it's worship. Empty words I can afford. I'm not chasing feelings, that's not why I'm singing. You're the reason for my song. And I only want to sing, if I sing with everything, if I sing for you, my King. Imagine why I would do this awful hype Cause it's all to lift you high You don't want perfection Just my soul's attention all I have is what I'll give That's right A morning, a song that lasts a moment I live a life of honest worship yeah, I'm here to sing, then sing with purpose All the praise that you deserve And now I only want to sing If I sing with everything if I sing for you, my King, oh, I can't imagine why I would do this all for high, cause it's all to lift you high. Oh, I only want to sing if I sing with everything. If I sing for you, my King, oh, I can't imagine why I would do this awful high, cause it's all to live too high, oh, and I only want to sing, if I sing with everything. If I sing for you, my King, oh, I can't imagine why I would do this awful high, cause it's 
soul to lift you high. Right. Yes, we lift you high, Lord. Just declare it. And where I go, you will go. You never leave me. When I'm lost, that's always true. In every high, in every low, you're standing next to me. In the fire, that's always true. I lift my eyes, let my heart cry out. You're alive, alive. With an infant we raise up our voice proclaim You're alive, alive Your love keeps chasing me And it always will, it always will Your grace keeps changing me And it always will, it always will Oh, in my joy in my pain, you're right beside me. In your arms, there's always more. When I fall, you are there. Your mercy will catch me. All my hope in Christ alone. Your love keeps chasing me. And it always will, it always will Your grace keeps changing me It always will, it always will You gave your life away Once and for all, once and for all Forever you will reign And you always will, you always will sing Oh with us he never leaves us nor forsake us Amen. thank you lord bless your holy name you know this past week at the love singapore prayer um, we were praying for something interesting it was called the pandemic fatigue you know it's it's so true and during this time you know all of us are fatigued from from just the many things that's going on the, the medical workers are tired you know the leaders retired because of, of this pandemic and those of us who have got children at home doing the HBL we are tired right and we always keep asking you know oh Lord when just when are we going to see the light at the end of the tunnel and that's when I was reminded you know the Lord says not only are we going to see the light at the end of the tunnel but we're going to see the light of the world Jesus He is the way maker 
He's going to show us the way out. And yes, let's do that right now, even as we come before the Lord in worship, to just embrace this promise that God has given to us in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord, we come before you, thanking you, Lord, for what you're going to do, Lord, to restore us, to save us, as we cry out to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are here and moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here and working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. And I worship you. And you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Turning lives around, you are here. Turning lives around, I worship you. I worship men in every heart, you are here. Men in every heart, I worship you. And I worship you, Lord. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. And you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are, that is who, that is who you are, 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 that is who you are. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Oh, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. We make a miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Church, I know that the presence of God is moving in a powerful way right now. And in this moment, I I just feel compelled that as we sing these words, this, this is the anthem to which we, we must come and pray at this service. I was just rem remembering just now, Pastor Roger was talking about this pandemic fatigue and many of us, I think in one way or another, you're, you're feeling burnt out, you're feeling fatigued, whether as a parent or as a student in your work area, as a cell leader, as a cell member, in many different ways, you're feeling that, that, that fatigue. And we all want to kind of reach that end. And during that time, the Lord just gave me this word that He reminds us in Psalm 1 to 1 that the Lord who watches over us neither slumbers nor sleeps. We may be fatigued, but He is not fatigued. God is not fatigued. He is still there. He is leading us every single step of the way. Yeah, we don't see the end of the tunnel right now, but what we do know is that He's right there with us. And whether it's, it's a thousand more steps or ten thousand more steps, it doesn't matter because He is right there with us. And I just know this word is for, 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 for somebody out there today. And you need to receive this. We're, we're going to enter into a time of prayer. We're going to pray for our nation. We're going to pray for, 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 for the nations around. And the Lord has placed upon my heart that we really want to be praying for, for, for Malaysia today. But before we even enter into that time, I feel that the words of these, or, or the lyrics of this song needs to be something we proclaim in our own lives first. And, and maybe you... We struggle to sing this, you know. Yeah, he's the way maker. He's, uh, he has he brings about miracles and everything, but we don't see that, and we struggle with that. But that's where we need faith, and we must have that faith today to declare the things that, even though we don't see it, we declare it right now. And and I just believe right in this moment that many of us we need to rise up. Our spirits need to rise up first and foremost before we talk about praying for our nation. Before we talk about praying for the nations around us, we need to rise up with that spirit of prayer, with that spirit of victory that the Lord places upon us. And I, I just want us to do this right now. I want us to lift up our hands in a posture of surrender. And I like to ask the worship team just lead, lead us quietly in that bridge. You know that. Even though, even though I don't see it, I want us to declare this. And some of you, you, you are, you're ready. You can sing this. By, go, by all means, go ahead and sing it. But some of us, it is a struggle to sing this. Now, I just encourage you. Today, take that step of faith to declare this. You know, faith is confidence in that which we do not see. 
all the more in this moment when you do not see God working, this is where we must rise up in faith and declare this, Lord, even when I don't see it, I know you are working because the Lord who watches over us neither slumbers nor sleeps. So if our hands lifted up, just sing this right now. Even when I don't see Even when I don't see you working Even when I don't feel you working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see you working Even when I don't feel it, you working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you working Even when I don't feel it, you working You never stop, you never stop working Let's take this step of faith, declare these words never stop declare working. these words Even when I don't see it, you working Even when I don't feel it, you working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop you never stop working Even when I don't see you working Even when I don't feel it you working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see you working Even when I don't feel it you working You never stop, you never stop working you never stop, you you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working you never stop way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. name of Jesus, I speak a new spirit upon each and every one of us. A spirit that comes from God, a spirit of victory, a spirit of conquest, a spirit of confidence, a spirit of strength and of courage right now. That whatever that struggle is, Lord, lift us up on wings like eagles. And Lord, no matter what the trouble is around us, Lord, we will soar, we will move together with you. Hallelujah. And church, with that, we want to take this time to come and pray right now. And then later on, we're going to carry on worshipping the Lord. But I just sense in this moment, this is the time for us to pray. We're going to first start be praying for Singapore. We thank God for how the Lord's been watching over us. We're thankful to hear the word that likely uh, further restrictions and further tightened measures are not required. But we're still not out of the woods yet. We still want to pray and ask the Lord to watch over us. And, and very often when we pray, one thing that's upon my heart is is that there are still, if I recall, the last report, at least I saw this, I think over 200 people who are still in the hospital because of COVID-19. And I think there were a handful that are in critical condition. Uh, yes, we pray for the frontline workers, we pray for the government and everything, but we must pray for those who are struggling firsthand with this uh, 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 disease, this virus as well, and speak God's healing upon them. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to come and pray, we're going to declare uh, uh, for oh, that miracles are going to take place. We're going to speak the, the, the life and the blood of Jesus into every single one of these lives. So I'm going to count to three. At the count of three, let's just declare hallelujah three times. You're going to enter into a minute or two of praying, praying in tongues, pray in English, pray for whatever the Lord leads you to pray for in our nation. You can be praying for our leaders, praying for wisdom, praying for protection and so on. But let's come and intercede, alright? I'm going to count right now. Ready? One, two, and three. Hallelujah! 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 Let's pray right now. Yes, Lord, stir up our spirits to pray for our nation. Yes, Lord, 
for the Lord's grace and mercy to be upon our, our nation, for the Lord to watch over us, watch over everybody's coming and they're going, whatever they're doing. Let's just ask for the protection of the Lord to be upon our land. Let's ask for the Lord's protection to be upon all our frontline workers, whether they're working at the borders, they're working at in the healthcare sector, in, in the different areas, law enforcement, defense, so on, all the different frontline workers. Let's be lifting them up into the Lord's hands. Ask the Lord to, to, to put a special hedge of protection around each and every one of them. Let's be praying for teachers, let's be praying for parents as they're also uh, going through this time of trying to adjust and so on to help the school, the students and so on. Let's be praying for them. And let's pray for all those of them uh, who are right now in the hospital receiving treatment for COVID-19, especially those who are in critical condition. Let's be praying and interceding for them right now. Let's declare God's healing. Let's declare God's presence to be upon them. Whether they know the Lord or not, let's pray that there'll be a supernatural peace that comes upon them. And that through this, the people around them will rise up to minister to them and to their family members. Let's pray for their family members as well. There must be anxiety, there must be worries, but let's just bless them in the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to continue praying now. We're going to pray for, for, for Malaysia. Our neighbors just uh, up north, and we all know we'll be hearing about the different reports. I think today they just said that the number of uh, infections has crossed the 9,000 mark. And there's another article that was saying was about how a lot of hospitals, the, the critical care units also are being filled uh, to capacity and we must pray and especially as the nation is you know deciding how to proceed on they're talking about the total lockdown and so on but we must lift up uh, Malaysia to the Lord's hands let's pray over them ask the Lord to watch over them I think we must pray for their leadership must pray for their hospitals their frontline workers pray for the, the whole population that as they go through this really with the Lord work in this land in such a powerful way and I know for many of us we we, we we have relatives, we have friends who are there. Take this time to pray over them and their families as well. And I know some of us here, uh, uh, um, you may be a Malaysian that you're living here in Singapore as well. And if some of you, you're, you know that you're in, a, in your household, there's someone who's Malaysian there, whatever. can you take this time to pray for, for, for that, that friend or that family member as well? Uh, some of you who are online with us, you may not be from FCBC, but you're actually in Malaysia right now. Can you put it on the live chat as well so that we know we can pray for someone and someone on the live chat looks at that, we, we know who you are, we can be praying for you and standing together with you as we intercede for Malaysia, all right? So we're going to do this. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to count to three again. We're going to declare hallelujah three times once more. We're going to proclaim victory and we're going to pray over Malaysia. So I'm going to do that right now. Ready? One, two, and three. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. Let's pray for Malaysia right now. Let's cry out for this land. Let's ask for the Lord's grace and mercy to be upon them. Let's speak for God's glory and God's presence to fill this nation during this time. Let's pray for the churches to rise up to, and that there will be a blessing to this nation during this time. Let's speak. God's protection upon their frontline workers, upon the people who are, in, who are who need to make decisions. Let's ask for God's wisdom to be upon them right now. Yes, let's continue to pray. Let's press in, press in, press in and intercede for Malaysia. Let's speak the Lord's glory upon this land right now. Let's speak the Lord's breakthrough. Let's declare breakthroughs upon this land right now as they are going through this time. Lord, we ask for your breakthrough upon this nation, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we lift up Malaysia into your hands. Lord, we lift up every single thing we prayed 
fall into your hands, whether it's Singapore or Malaysia, we, Lord, we know that you are God who hears our prayers. And Lord, we know that you are the one leading us through this. We, we thank you for watching us, watching over us so far. And Lord, we cry out that, that, that your grace and mercy will continue to sustain us as we move into the season ahead. We pray for Singapore. We thank you for all that's been done. And Lord, we also want to pray for Malaysia. And we ask for the breakthrough. We ask for the victory that comes from you, Lord. Lord, we lift every single person up into that. And Lord, we know that many of them are struggling. They've, they've tested positive. They're going through treatment and everything. There are a lot of struggles there right now. But we ask for your breakthrough through, we ask for your presence to be upon them. We pray that the churches will rise up, that during this time, the nation will be filled with prayer, will be filled with your presence, will be filled with your spirit as your people cry out for you, O Lord. So Lord, we lift up the nation of Malaysia into your hands. We commit it to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And let's continue to worship and declare this. Amen. Hallelujah. You are we make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are, we make a miracle work, a promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are, we make a Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are. That is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are, that is who you are, and that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are. This is who you are, Lord Jesus our promise keeper, Father. And right now, we just stand united, standing strong and firm in your promise, Lord, that you're going to set us free, Lord. You're going to set the world free as we come together, Lord, to lift up our hands, lift up our hearts in worship to the King of kings, to Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord. So I'll stand with arms high and harder than them in all of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender all I am is yours. So 
every emotion, every struggle, every thought, every breath, every single thing about us, Lord, we lay it at the foot of the cross. And we ask you to fill us afresh. Fill us with your strength, your courage, your love, your presence, your glory, so that, Lord, we may rise up beyond our circumstances, beyond anything of this world. And Lord, we will become the men and the women that you have called us to be. So Lord, we come before you surrendered. Because this posture of surrender is what gives us our victory. Because we lay it all down before you. So Lord, we thank you. 
And to everyone here, I bless you that the Lord will, that you will find that renewed strength, that renewed spirit that comes from the Lord and that you will be empowered to step into every single thing that the Lord leads you into. So I bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, it was just such a fantastic time praying and, and worshipping, and I trust that you have been greatly touched by the Lord as well. Well, if you're not yet seated, why don't you just be seated right now? And we're going to continue in this atmosphere of worship as we right now begin to worship the Lord through our tithes and our offering. And so we're going to prepare our hearts to give to the Lord right now. But before we do that, just all the standard instructions on how we can do that. We're going to put it all up on the screen right now. As you can see, we've got the two QR codes there for you to scan with your respective banking apps. The one in the red border is for our regular tithes and offering, which goes into our general fund. Or the one in the blue border is for missions and faith pledges, which is over and above our regular giving. And this is specifically for the purposes of, of missions and international work and other ministries that exist outside of FCB. So take note of these two QR codes there And if for whatever reason it's not quite working out You can always head to the URL that's on the screen as well fcbc.org.sg slash offering So as you get everything ready Let's come and join our hearts together for a word of prayer And let's commit this offering to the Lord Lord, we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity we have to give to you and we know that you have first demonstrated to us what it means to give generously. And so today, Lord, we pray that you will be honoured, you will rejoice in this offering that we're giving to you because we just want to bless you. We pray this offering will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom here in Singapore and around the world. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. May the Lord bless you as you give to Him. Uh, just one announcement for all of us this weekend and it's that uh, it's going to be on our Holy Communion that's going to be taking place on the 5th and 6th of June, which is uh, next week. So just take note, it's going to be Communion Weekend. So um, all of us just remember to prepare the elements before the service starts and have them with you as the service uh, begins. All right? So that's the only thing for all of us to remember. And cell leaders, if you've got cell members who are not joining us for service this weekend and they miss out on this, just do make sure that they all are caught up and they're aware that it is communion weekend next weekend. All right, so that's, that's the new announcement we have. And uh, with that, let's jump into the Word of God for this weekend. You know, since last weekend was Pentecost Sunday, I thought I'd like to continue talking along the lines of the Holy Spirit and the empowerment that all of us have. And one thing I, I did last week was that I, I said, at one of my, my last point actually, I said that we must shift our mindset and we must shift our focus that the way we think is to not just focus on desiring a same experience again, but to desire God afresh. I think that's very important. And as I talk about that, I did briefly mention about it. You heard me say it last week and uh, you will always hear preachers and pastors talking about it. But one thing I say is that we want a fresh revival, a fresh outpouring of the Lord. And maybe we hear this word revival and we're wondering what does this word really mean? And I, I mean, there are many different ways to define it. And I put it down in one simple statement, I guess. And, and this is it. I say this. Revival is a spiritual awakening from spiritual stagnation to supernatural passion for God. That's what I would define as revival. See, revival comes from the word revive. That means you must be in a different state from before. And what state were we in before? We were at this place of spiritual stagnation. But we move from spiritual stagnation to this spiritual awakening where, where the Lord moves in such a powerful way. We are drawn to His presence and to His Spirit. And with that comes about this supernatural passion for God. And we see that among the disciples, the apostles of the early church, that when they were disciples following Jesus, they, they, they followed Jesus, they went through the motion, they did everything they were supposed to do, but yet there was some level of stagnation, especially after Jesus died on the cross. And remember, they didn't know that three days later He would, he would resurrect. And in that time, they were very defeated. There was this stagnation. But when Jesus resurrected, when He rose again, He appeared to the disciples, He restored them, He empowered them, and the disciples in Acts chapter 2 will receive the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. From that moment, something happened. 
They were no longer in that place of stagnation, but this supernatural passion for God was awakened within them. And that's why they would give their lives going to the ends of the earth for the sake of the gospel. Now, I'm sure this is something that we all desire. We desire for our own lives. We desire to see it in our cell groups, in church. We desire to see it in, in Singapore and all around the world. We all want revival. But there's often a big issue when it comes to revival. You see, revival comes from God. We, it, we just, when God wants to bring about a revival, it comes about. But the big problem with revival, honestly, is sustaining it. It was, I believe, in the early 1900s, you know, God used a man by the name of John Alexander Dowie to bring about a revival. And because of that, a whole new city was formed uh, in, in Illinois, in the United States. And this city was called Zion City. And they, they founded a whole new city there. There was no vices and so on. Um, if, you, if we go back to that city and visit the church from which the revival came, it is, well, in this day and age, it's as dead as it can be. And a pastor in the church was asked, you know, do you people bring healing to the sick? And the answer that was given is this. Oh, we don't do that anymore because we don't have the anointing that Pastor Dawi had back in the day. Now, what is the point here I'm trying to make with this story? See, revival can come, but revival can fizzle out as well. And for all of us, the important thing we must note is this. The concern is not whether or not revival comes, but whether we can keep it going when it's here. See, revival is not determined by us. It is God that brings about the revival. But we need to talk about how can we keep it going when it's here. And so the message I have for us this weekend, in line of Pentecost weekend and everything, I've got, I've got this message called Growing in Anointing. And I think it's something tremendously important to talk about if we not only want to just usher in a fresh wave of revival, but to sustain it in all that we do. I know we all want to grow in our anointing, our anointing as a preacher, as a pastor, as a leader, as a, as a parent, as a child, and everything that we do. We want to grow in this anointing. And for that to happen, we need to change. You see, if we want to see um, um, a greater outpouring of the Spirit of God here and we want to sustain it in this church, then we need to continue to grow in this anointing. It was a man by the name of uh, G. Campbell Morgan. He said this, Revival cannot be organized but we can set our sails to catch the wind from heaven when God chooses to blow upon His people once again. See, revival comes from God, but we can grow in that anointing. We can prepare our hearts. We can prepare ourselves in the way we live. We can grow in that anointing so that when God pours out His Spirit afresh, we're ready to catch it and move to where God has for us. With that, I want to read today's scripture reading. Uh, it comes from the book of Ephesians, and actually we'll be familiar with this because if you've been following our Ephesians series, uh, Pastor Kong has been talking about this. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And I'm going to read it, what it says here. It says, For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of His glorious riches, He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this word and we ask that as we look to your word together, you will speak to us in such a powerful way. We, we cry out not just for a touch but Lord for a transformation in our hearts. So that as we receive this word, we will leave this place knowing that we've been empowered by your presence, by your spirit, by your power. And Lord, we will go out and bring your presence and your glory wherever we go. So we commit this time to your hands. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Now, I don't know when God is going to pour out his spirit upon us in a fresh way. But like we said earlier, we need to prepare ourselves for it. And one way we do that is to grow in our anointing. In, in Ephesians chapter 3, it starts out saying this in verse 16 just now, as I read. Paul writes this, I pray that out of His glorious riches, that the Lord may strengthen you with power 
through His Spirit in your inner being. This is about this empowerment that comes from the Lord. And later on in verse 19, he says that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, what is this fullness all about? Fullness means to be filled completely. But filled with what? Well, when you look through these couple of verses, we talked about how you look at verses 17 all the way to, or 16 all the way to 18. It talks about how we're filled with His love, we're filled with His presence, and we are filled with His power. And so, we must continue to grow in this area. Like, like Paul writes here that he prays that we may be strengthened, that we, the Lord will continue to strengthen us with power, okay, through His Spirit. And so, we have to continue to grow in our anointing. Now, what is anointing? Anointing is this. Basically, it's being set apart and empowered to do God's work. When someone is anointed to, to do something, you know, God sets apart that person. He empowers that person to go, what, to go do whatever He has called that person to do. Now, anointing has many different meanings, but when we say that, Lord, we need to grow in anointing, we need more of your anointing, it's basically saying that, Lord, we need your empowerment, we need more of you in our lives to do that which you have called us to do, to do that which you have set us apart to go and do. That is what it's about. And throughout Scripture, we read about that anointing that comes from the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 to 22. It says, He, God, who establishes us with you in Christ, has anointed us, is God, who also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, it says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. So this anointing that we talk about is this supernatural and divine empowerment, strengthening, power, whatever you want to call it, that comes from God so that we are enabled to do that which God has called us to do. Eric B. Johnson said this. He said, The question should never be whether God wants to move. The question should be whether we are in a place to receive His move and steward it to a place of increase. See, that is our role. And so we must continue to grow in our anointing. So how can we steward this? How can we uh, 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 facilitate this move of God to increase around us? The question we must answer today is, how can we grow in anointing? Three things I'd like to share with us. Number one, if we want to grow in our anointing, to grow in this empowerment that God has for us, then firstly, we must walk in holiness. We must walk in holiness. You know, revival will carry on and it will continue on if we continue to walk in holiness. You know, we must, you know, I, I use this term walk in holiness because it's a journey. It's not something that, well, you, it's not a rank or something you earn. I do this and then now I'm considered holy. No, it's something you must continue to walk and journey through every single day of our lives. Now, understand this, you know. Revival doesn't come because we are holy enough. In fact, it is in revival that we see a lot of people repent of their sins. A lot of their sin is, is revealed, is dealt with. And so it's not that they had done all that already and then that revival comes. No, when God brings about this, you see people repenting and turning away from their sin. But once God starts this work, okay, He doesn't, it's, it's, not, deter, it's not dependent on our holiness, but once God starts this work, it is our holiness that will help sustain this work and keep it going on. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. See, when, when revival comes... It is so that we can be transformed into the Lord's image. But if we don't walk in holiness, then we, we are not being transformed. We were walking in, in sin, in idolatry, in whatever other kind of thing. But when this revival comes, we must repent from that and say, Lord, I choose to walk in holiness, to be transformed by your presence each and every day. See, the purpose of the manifestation of the Spirit of God is to come and transform us, to, to take us from that place of, 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 of whatever place we come from, that, dirt, that, that, that sinful state, and restore us 
to that glory that God has for us, to restore us to His image. And so, if we want revival, we want revival to be sustained, we must continually be transformed, not just on the surface, not just on the outside, but from deep within. You know, many of us, like I mentioned last week, we cry out for a mighty visitation of the Holy Spirit. We want the Holy Spirit to come and, and, and show up. But the reality is, do you know if it, in our church today, let's say, forget the pandemic, just assume that we can all meet as per regular. If God's, if God's presence is manifested in His full glory, many of us will just drop dead in church. Just like Ananias and uh, Sapphira because of the sin that is in our lives. And if revival comes about, and if revival is the outpouring and the great manifestation of the presence of God, then we as His stewards must walk in holiness. See, revival, that's why revival always, when we see a revival happening, we always see at the start, there's this great conviction of sin. And there's this great turning and repentance because people are being transformed by the Spirit of God. It was once stated here that when a holy God draws near in true revival, people come under terrible conviction of sin. The outstanding feature of spiritual awakening has been the profound consciousness of the presence and holiness of God. And in Scripture, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, we are reminded of this, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy, because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. If we want to see the, the presence of God moving in our lives in a powerful way, then we need to live in holiness. Without that holiness, we are not going to see that happening. You know, it's tough to live in holiness. Honestly, none of us can truly live in, in, in holiness. I, I don't have the strength to do that. You don't have the strength to do that either. But that's why it's, it, we need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We cannot walk in holiness just by ourselves. We need the Holy Spirit to be upon us. In Ezekiel 36, verses 26 to 27, God says to the people, He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. See, this is what the Holy Spirit does in us. We don't have that capacity to walk in holiness. We can try and sometimes we succeed, but ultimately we will stumble, we will fall. And so what we need is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Lord, help me, give me that new spirit. Help, help soften my heart. If my heart is a heart of stone, Lord, give me a heart of flesh. And it's not just a one-time thing. It's, a, it's something that we must do every single day, every single moment. And today, this first point, the calling that I have for all of us, everyone in this church, whether we are staff, we are pastors, or we are leaders or not, or we are members, all of us must repent. We must always say, Lord, I, I, I want to repent. I want to come before you and repent. And I want to walk in holiness. Why? Because, Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you in my life. I want to see you in every single thing that I do. I want to see your hand upon your, and your power upon every single thing that, that we do then we must come in repentance. And you know what? Today, there's some of us here, you know you've got sin in your life that's not dealt with, that's not been held accountable. We need to come and repent of this. Sometimes we, we always don't like to do that. We don't like to have a moment of repentance of not just coming before God, but coming before our leaders and, and other people to hold us accountable. We don't like that. You know why? Because we seem to have this wrong idea where the call to repentance is mistaken for a call of condemnation. Where we think that when the church says we need to repent, we are really being condemned, but it's not. I want to tell you something. The call to repentance, it is a call for restoration. It is a call for transformation. If we choose to leave that sin in our lives, if we refuse to bring it to light, you know what? There's not going to be any restoration. There's not going to be any transformation that will take place in our lives. And today, if you want to grow in the anointing, I know God has called us to do many different things. If you want to grow in the anointing as a preacher, as a pastor, as a leader, in whatever you do in the area of your ministry, as a prayer leader, as a prayer point leader, as a worship leader, or whatever it is, if you want to grow in the area, then we say, Lord, we must repent because, Lord, we need to be restored. We need to be transformed by your Spirit. Today, that's the first call that we must answer. 
if we want to grow in our anointing, we want to grow in the empowerment and the strength that the Lord has for us, the first thing we need to do is that we must walk in holiness. Walk in holiness. If today you know you've missed the mark, God's calling you to repent, not to condemn you, but so that you can be restored, so that you can be transformed. That's the first thing. The second thing we must do in order to grow in our anointing is that we must live in intimacy with God. You see, growing in holiness is really a prerequisite for us to grow in intimacy with the Lord. If we continue to harbor sin in our lives, remember I've always said this, that sin separates us from God. Uh, in Psalms, it talks about how uh, because of this sin, the Lord is turned away from, from, from us. So if we want to live in intimacy with the Lord, we must walk in holiness. James chapter 4, verse 8. We always know this verse, we quote it, Come near to God and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Often, we like to quote the first half. Come near to the Lord or draw near to God and He will draw near to you. But down there, it says after that, wash your hands, you sinners, basically purify your hearts. Get right. Get right with the Lord and then we can come and draw near, we can live in intimacy with God. See, what God is concerned it's not just about what you and I do for Him, but He's concerned about our relationship with Him. During a time of revival, when we see God manifesting Himself, He is not just concerned about what we need to do for Him, but He's concerned about our relationship with Him. You know, Jesus Christ is one of a, it's, it's a manifestation of God. And when we read about that, while we talk, we're taught that Jesus' name is Emmanuel, God with us. That is what we must remember. God is concerned about that relationship that we have with Him. You know, that is part of the reason why there needs to be revival. But the problem is that very often when it comes to the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, we tend to get the wrong idea. Okay, and I did mention a little bit about it last weekend. You know, very often we think it's about what happens rather than who is there. So you come for a service, you go for a conference or whatever, we're focused on what happened. What, did somebody get healed? Did, we, did I get goosebumps? Did I cry? Did this happen? Did that happen? We, or did, did something miraculous happen? Was there a pillar of fire? Was there clouds and everything? We, get, we focus on that. But as a result, we get caught up with what happens versus who was there. And we can keep wanting to look out for all these things and we totally miss out that God's very presence was there. You know, that's why I remember I mentioned that sometimes we get caught up with looking, we get caught up looking for miracles instead of cherishing the moments we have with the Lord. See, we must cherish that relationship. We must cherish the presence of God first before we talk about the power of God. We can't just chase after that miracle. Otherwise, we end up treating God like some kind of vending machine or worse, some kind of uh, entertainer that just does some tricks to, to keep us entertained. See, at the end of the day, you can know all that a person has done, but yet not actually know that person, not actually have a relationship with that person. Many of us here, we know who John Wesley is. We know who John Bunyan is. We know Watchman Nee. We know D.L. Moody, C.S. Lewis, Charles Spurgeon, and so on. But we, we know of them, but we don't actually know them. We don't have a relationship with them. Similarly, we can know about God. We can know of God. We can know of all the mighty things that He has done, whether in this day or in days past, but yet we can totally not know Him. We cannot walk in, in, we can end up living a life where He's a stranger to us and we are a stranger to Him. And we don't actually live in intimacy with the Lord. Today, God is calling us to that life of, of intimacy with Him. If all we know is just the things that He has done, if all we crave for is just for Him to do things in our lives and around us, then our relationship with Him becomes uh, a superficial one. And we don't want a superficial uh, relationship with the Lord. We want a deep one. And when God brings about that change in us, when we talk about that revival coming, it's so that we draw close to Him. 
You know, just now we looked at Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. You know, he says, I'll give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit in you. I'll remove that heart of stone, give you a heart of flesh and so on. But it doesn't end there. If we go ahead to verse 28, he says, he does all that. And then verse 28, then you will live in the land I gave your ancestors and you will be my people and I will be your God. Right here, you see God desiring this intimate relationship with us. I've always said this, that God is a promise keeper, that, that God is not a liar, that when He says, you know, I will never leave you nor forsake you, then He will really forsake No, He doesn't. He, he hungers for us. He reaches out to us, even though we can run far away from Him. We can push Him aside. Even though our hearts are so hardened against God, He still pursues us because He wants us to be His people. He wants to be our God. That's that focus right there, that intimacy with the Lord. And so the question then today is, are we growing in our intimacy with the Lord? Are we, are we living in intimacy with God? It's very simple. Yeah? How's our time with the Lord? How's our quiet time with the Lord? Are we reading His Word? Are we praying? If we are, are we doing it because it was supposed to do it? Or are we doing it because we genuinely want to be in a relationship with God. We genuinely want and desire and need God in our lives. See, we need to come and really look at why we're doing this. We can go through all the motions. We can do all that prayer. We can, we can help. In, we can serve in, 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 our, in the prayer tower. We can do our quiet time. We can read X amount of, of, of the Bible every single day. But if we do it just to go through the motion, then we're not actually living in an intimacy with the Lord. We must actually come before God and cry to Him. And, 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 but it's very simple. If today you know that you're far away from the Lord, you know that you don't have this intimate relationship with the Lord, it's very simple. Start by praying. Start by praying. Praying every single day. Take time out of your day to seek the Lord, to come before the Lord. Not just because you need something. Not, not just because you're trying to park your car and there's no parking space and then you're, you're praying that God will give you a parking spot or, or, or that praying just for God to hold the weather or that our bus will come and so on. Not just, not just praying because we need something, but because we want God. Because we desire God. And when we reach that place, we're going to see the heavens open up. We're going to see, we're going to begin to have that glimpse of revival. Uh, someone once said this, you know, prayer begets revival, which then begets more prayer. Prayer is important. We must come and, 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 and have this desire to pray. Leonard Ravenhill makes this powerful statement. He says, what has hell to fear other than a God-anointed prayer-powered church? That's why it's important for us to pray. And sometimes we may not see the immediate outcome of that prayer, but we must press in. We must press in in all that we do. Whether we're, we're, we're doing our prayer tower, it's our own quiet time, we're praying for the sick, we're praying at our cell group or whatever meeting, we must say, Lord, we want to pray. Not just because we are told to do so, not just because we're supposed to do so, but Lord, we want to pray because we want you. We need you. If I pray for a person, it's not just that it's the right thing to do, but Lord, I want to pray that this person will experience more of you because Lord, I've experienced you in my life. I, have, I, I know how life is different when I have you and I want others to experience that. That is what I'm talking about. We must live in intimacy with the Lord. And this psalmist who says this in Psalm 73, verse 28, but as for me, it is good to be near God. And I've made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. I like that statement that it is good to be near God. Today, maybe some of you, this is the one thing you need to take back. It is good to be near God. We need to say, Lord, I want to walk. I want to live a life of intimacy with you. I don't just want to know of you. I want to know you for myself. A couple of, I think probably a few months ago, I said this really to some of the youth who are, who are watching this. God is not your God. You know the God of your parents. You know the God of your pastors or the God of your leaders. But you, you know of God, you don't know God for yourself. Today, God is saying this to you. You, know, you need to draw near to Him. Not because it's the right thing to do. Not because you're told to do so. But because you genuinely want to draw near to Him. 
today, this is the challenge to you. Don't just go through the motion. Don't just know of God. Don't just desire God to do things in our lives, but desire God first and foremost. So how can we grow in our anointing? Number one, we must walk in holiness. Number two, we must live in intimacy with God. Finally, number three, we must commit ourselves to reaching out. We must commit ourselves to reaching out. You know, revival will continue as we commit ourselves to reach out to others around us because that is the key reason why the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon us in the first place. In fact, that last psalm, that, that, that last verse in that psalm, I read Psalm 73 verse 28, but as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. See, these things come hand in hand. The presence of God, the Spirit of God, the power of God, the anointing of God is so that we can tell of His deeds. We can preach the gospel to all creation. We can make disciples of every nation. That is what it's all about. What did Jesus say? Remember last week I talked about it on, uh, before Pen the day of Pentecost came about and the, the, the disciples received the spirit of power upon them. What, what did Jesus say before he ascended? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The purpose of that power is mentioned right there already. That this power we receive is not just for us to entertain ourselves, for us to feel a certain way, for us to enjoy something, but it is so that people will be reached out to. People will hear about the goodness of God. People will hear the gospel. See, immediately after the Holy Spirit is poured out on the day of Pentecost, what happens? Okay, Acts chapter 2. Look at two verses. Verse 14 and then verse 41. After the, the Holy Spirit was poured upon them, it says, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, addressed the crowd. And he says all he says in verse 41, Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. That the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and they're compelled to stand up to proclaim, just like what it says in Psalm 73, they will tell of all the deeds of the Lord. They spoke, they preached the gospel, they reached out to people. See, the purpose of us being anointed is not just to sit around and enjoy the anointing. On the day of Pentecost, when those tongues of fire appeared on the heads of the people, it's not just that they stood around and they enjoyed, wow, this is so miraculous, it's interesting. We're speaking in different tongues and languages, but we can understand each other. This is amazing, this is beautiful. They didn't just stand around and enjoy that moment, but instead, they went through this thing called evangelism. They were anointed to serve. They were anointed to evangelize. Remember when Jesus, in, in the Gospel of Luke, he quotes in the Old Testament scriptures as well. And in Luke 4, verse 18 to 19, he says this, The Spirit of the Lord or the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. See, when God pours out His revival, it's not just for us to enjoy it, but it's for us to reach out. And if we want to sustain that, we must commit ourselves to reach out. Andrew Bonar said this, Revivals begin with God's own people. The Holy Spirit touches their heart anew, gives them new fervor, compassion, zeal, new light and life. And when He has thus come to you, He next goes forth to the valley of dry bones. Oh, what responsibility this lays on the church of God. That if we grieve him away from ourselves or hinder his visit, then the poor and perishing world suffers sorely. What is the point he's trying to make here? The point he's trying to make is that this outpouring of the Spirit is not for us to enjoy, but for us to serve, for us to reach out, for us to bring it to the world out there that needs this revival. That's why he says, the valley of the dry bones. The people out there, they need this revival. And that's where the church today needs to rethink and understand what revival actually is. Revival is not about feeling good. 
Revival is not about, well, you know, we come to church and or go to cell group and there's all these kind of different things happening. These things are part of revival, but that in itself is not the purpose behind revival. Revival is not a feeling. It's not something that happens. Revival is about people. It's about lives. Revival is, a, is about souls. In Acts chapter 2, the disciples' lives would change because of the outpouring of the Spirit, because of that revival. They waited on the Lord and then His anointing came upon them. Remember, anointing is about being set apart to fulfill God's purposes. So, when you, when you see the disciples, they didn't just receive and enjoy the presence or the baptism of the Spirit, but from there, they committed to reach out and actually their lives will become busier and busier and busier from then on. So Acts chapter 2, we read at the start, you know, the Holy Spirit pours out upon them, they preach, and 3,000 are saved and everything. You go on and read the last portion, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. They then devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. See, at the end of the day, this is what it's about. Not, I mean, revival comes so that the people out there can receive that new life, that new spirit that God has for them. See, revival isn't about feeling something. Revival is about people's souls. It's about real life. It's about people out there who need the Spirit of God to change them forever. You know, that's why we are currently at this, for us as a church, we're at this uh, place right now. We've been working out how to kind of make adjustments for the whole new season uh, ahead and everything. And actually, it's, it's great. I, 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 I'm, I'm so convicted and convinced about this point I talk about being committed to reaching out because this weekend is actually when we're going to be launching a, a new wave of Sing Fu Xiao to pilot groups and they're going to be launched on, on Sunday and the re and some of us may be wondering why pilot groups again because uh, well we're very you we after a couple of years we've been getting the hang of running Sing Fu Xiao to in person but during this particular season everything has gone online even in the next couple of months down the road we're not quite sure how things will be and so we are launching out this new set of pilot uh, uh, groups and I'm very thankful for all of you in the church who are part of these groups because they're here to try and, and, and see how we can use the tools at our, at our disposal right now, how we can use you know, the online platforms and everything to still run this and make an effort to reach out. And the reason this is important is because we, we have this commitment to reach out. We can't say that, oh, just because you know, everything is restricted, there are these different things, we want to stop, we want to give up. No, we must come and figure this out because we're committed to reaching out, because we're committed to the preaching of the gospel so that people's lives can be transformed and saved. That is what it's all about. And, and, and you know what? If we want to see that revival, if we want a revival to be sustained, we must always commit ourselves to be reaching out. And that's what this church is all about. That's what we want to do. I've got so much more to share about this and then kind of work out how we're going to share this in the next couple of months. But we're believing God that we're going to see a mighty wave of revival. We're believing to see that many things that we thought are impossible are going to be possible, not by our own strength, not by our own ability, but because God is with us. And so as we launch these groups out, you know what? We're going to go out with faith, believing that God He's going to annoy every session. You know, some of, this, some of the leaders um, uh, of these groups right now, this word is for you. Grow in the anointing. During this whole season, yes, there may be, we, sometimes we may feel there are setbacks. It's so difficult to get going and everything. But you know what? Let's continue. Okay, continue to, to, to walk in holiness, continue to live in intimacy with the Lord, and most of all, commit ourselves to still be reaching out. And it's so, it's so precious. In fact, there are other churches around who are committed to reaching out. They're also wanting to hear from us how is this going to go because they want to see how in this time, outreach will not have to stop. 
We can use all the different kinds of means and resources at our disposal to continue to bring the gospel out there. And I believe that as we do this, God sees that, God honors that, and I know God's presence is with us. And so are we talking more at the launch through all these group leaders, but I think it's just exciting as we're going into this. And today, this is what I want to share with all of us. How can we grow in anointing? In whatever area the Lord has placed you in, anointing as a cell leader, anointing in reaching out and preaching the gospel and so on. How can we grow in that anointing? Three things. Number one, we must walk in holiness. Number two, we must live in intimacy with God. And lastly, we must commit ourselves to reaching out. We must commit ourselves to that. Today, I, I just feel this new spirit as, as, you know, last week I just reminded it's Pentecost and we talk about the presence of the Holy Spirit and this week the Lord places upon me because I think this, it's such a perfect timing because we're being launched out. There are these groups being launched out during this time. And I know many of us have been reaching out in one way or another during this time but now we're, gonna, we're talking about this concerted effort because we, we want to be ready for that revival. We don't know when God is going to move or how He's going to move, but we're going to carry on doing His work. Because that's what God has called us to do. But we must say first and foremost, Lord, we need You. And we want to grow in that anointing. We want to walk in holiness. We want to live in intimacy. We want to commit to reaching out to the lost. I'm reminded of this statement that a minister, a preacher once said, his name is E.M. Bounds. He said this, what the church needs today is not more machinery or better, not new organizations or more and novel methods, but men whom the Holy Ghost can use, men of prayer, men mighty in prayer. And the Holy Ghost does not flow through methods but through men, through people. He does not come on machinery, but on people. He does not anoint plans, but people, people of prayer. This is what I want to share with us. Now, it's not that there's no place for new machinery and methods and all that. The point here is this. God anoints people, not strategies. Yes, there are many powerful tools and strategies out there and we adopt these different tools and everything. But above that, it is about the anointing that we must grow in. See, in the end, there are, there are a million ways we can do a lot of different things and we can choose any of them. But you know what? Any of them, no matter how good or bad it is, it can work. It, it can work or in fact, it may not work if the person is not anointed by the Lord. In fact, I'll tell you this, the best method will not work if we do not grow in our anointing. That is the first and most important thing first. And we say, Lord, I want to grow in anointing. And when we grow in that anointing, you know what? Whatever direction we set, whatever decision we make, you're going to see the hand of the Lord upon that because it is about us first and foremost. As we go forth to serve to reach out in these different ways. We must say, Lord, first and foremost, before we talk about this strategy, before we talk about this program, whatever it is, my, I, want, I want to grow in anointing. I want to walk in holiness. I want to live in intimacy with you. I want to commit to reaching out. And Lord, if this is what we're saying for the season ahead, Lord, I will go forth knowing that you are behind us, knowing that you are in front of us, knowing that you are with us. And so to all of us as a church, as I was finishing up writing this message, I was thinking, what is that prayer that I have for us as a church? I think the words of Ephesians 3 takes it right out of my mouth. So I want to read to you what Paul wrote. And this is my prayer for all of us in this church. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 to 20. And I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ 
though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. I thought it was just perfect how this is the word that the Lord gave to me as Sun and I began this new journey of our ministry. It was perfect that as we went through the book of Ephesians, my dad was just studying scripture and this became such an even greater reality as this is the word that the Lord has given to us. And today as I preach this message, this is the, the very blessing that I want to speak and pray over all of us as a church. Today, we must ask God for more. And some of us, in one way or another, you, we have this sense of stagnation. Remember, this revival is moving from spiritual stagnation to spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening that re- leads us to this supernatural passion, supernatural power, supernatural presence of the Lord. If that's what we feel, if we feel like we're in this place of stagnation, then we must cry out to the Lord more. We must ask God for more. We must step out to do more. You know why? Because all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. As we close off this service later on, we're going to just cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, we don't want the same experience again. We want your presence afresh. We want you I know today there are some of us that you're here attending this service but you've never responded to the gospel before. It may feel like, you know, this this message is very much for, for the church and for Christians but this message is for you as well. This message is relevant for you. If you don't know Jesus, you've never responded to the gospel before, this message is for you. You know why? Because God wants you to know that all of us, no matter how close or how far away we are from Him, He desires us. He wants to have a relationship with us. He has a plan and He has a purpose for our life. His word, also from the book of Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it's written, For we are God's masterpiece. He he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Today, you can be far away from the Lord. You know what? The very person who wrote the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul, he was someone who was so far away from the Lord, so far away from the gospel. He was persecuting Christians. He was the total opposite of what a Christian was supposed to be. But yet, God transformed him and God used him in such a powerful way. You know why? Because every, no one is a mistake in God's eyes. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. But God says you are His masterpiece. You are so precious in His eyes that God will spare no expense in calling out to you. See, this is what happened in our lives. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fall short of God's standard. What does it mean to sin? Sin is to not just do wrong things, but turn away from God's ways. Live life according to our own ways. And when we have that sin, this sin separates us. The Bible goes on to then say, the wages of sin is death. This death is not just a physical death, it's a spiritual death. It's an eternal separation of our spirits from the Spirit of God. But you know what? God was not happy to leave us separated. Even though we turn away from Him, you can look through the whole Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, you see God's abundant grace. How men and women, we continually turn away from the Lord, but yet He continues to reach out to us. He continues to call out to all of us despite our sin. And we see the greatest manifestation of this through Jesus Christ. That when our sin has separated us, God sent His Son Jesus to take on our sins, to pay the price for our sins, to die for our sins so that we can be restored to God. John 3, 16 and 17 says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but so that through Him the world may be saved. So Jesus came. He died on the cross. 
He took on that punishment for all our sins. And you know what? At that moment when, 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 when Jesus was on the cross and He died, He uttered these words, My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? You know why? Because when He took on all that sin, He took on that separation so that we don't have to be separated from the Lord. And because of His death on the cross for our sins, because He paid that price, we are now restored to the Lord. We don't have to live separated from God anymore. We can be in His presence. That's why this outpouring of His Spirit is so powerful because God does not want us to be separated from Him. He does not want us to be orphans, but He wants us to know that He is with us. He is in us. And today, if you don't know the Lord, that is His word for you. And God wants to transform us. Earlier on, I mentioned that after Jesus died on the cross, the disciples were a mess. How did they then end up being transformed to this great uh, 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 man of God who will be used by him powerfully and finally give their lives for the gospel. How would that, what happened there? Because Jesus didn't remain dead. Three days later, after he died on the cross, he rose again, showing us his sovereignty, his power, that he has command over life and death. And not just that, showing us that even in one of the most hopeless situations, there is hope. Today, this hope is here for you. We can try to, to find a way to, to salvation, to save ourselves in many different ways, but all, nothing else works except through the Lord. And today is no coincidence that you're here. You're here because God is reaching out to you. God is calling out to you. When I say that revival, for us to grow in anointing and revival comes, we must be committed to reaching out. You know who is the most committed to reaching out? God is. And you may feel like you're so far away from Him. You may feel like you, you don't deserve or whatever it is, His, His love and, and everything. God says, you do. Because He is calling out to you right now. Return to Him. I'm going to close off this service in a short while, but I'd like to invite all of us right now. Can we just close our eyes and bow our heads, wherever we are? Everyone, close our eyes and bow our heads. And it's a very sacred moment, it's a very special moment because for those of you who have never responded to the gospel before, I'm going to give you this opportunity to do so. Here's what we're going to do. In a short while's time, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. I'm going to say this prayer out loud. I want you to pray along after me out loud as well. Say everything I say word for word. All the Christians, we pray together in this moment, but especially those of you who have never responded to the gospel, pray along with me. Pray out loud. This is the response. I want to help facilitate this response for you to say, Lord, today, I want to follow you. So if all our heads but all our eyes closed, you pray along with me. And today, I take the step of faith. And some of you, you, you're wondering, should I pray or should I not pray? Right now, God is speaking to you. You know, your heart is beating fast. You know, something, some, you, the Lord is speaking to you in such a unique way. Today, come and respond to Him. So if our heads bow, our eyes closed, I'm going to pray right now. And you pray along with me. Say these words. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for your great love for me. Thank you for your great love for me. That no matter how far away I've run, that no matter how far away I've run, you chase after me. You chase after me. You still reach out to me. You still reach out to me. Thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for sending your son Jesus. To die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I know that I am a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner. But because of you. But because of you. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Restore me. Restore me. Today. Today. I declare. I declare. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. And I want to follow you. And I want to follow you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With our heads bowed and our eyes still closed, I'm sure there's some of you who prayed this prayer for the first time. And if that's you, here's what I'm going to do. In a moment's time, I'm going to count to three. And the moment you hear me say three, if you prayed along with me just now, I'd like you to do this. I want you to say a very simple prayer. This time, I'm not going to lead you in this prayer. You're going to say this prayer yourself. But it's a very short one. I'll give you the words. It's really simple. The prayer simply goes like this. God, reveal yourself to me. God, reveal yourself to me. That's all. I want you to say this prayer yourself because I want you to know that God hears you. And as you respond with this prayer, I know God is going to reveal Himself to you in such a real way. Whether it's today, tomorrow, or sometime, He's going to reveal Himself to you in such a real way. And you're going to experience Him in such a powerful way. 
And even if just now you didn't pray out loud along with me in the other prayer, but you know you need to respond. At the count of three, just say this simple prayer as well. Say, God, reveal yourself to me. That's all. Today, don't wait any longer. God is calling out to you. Today, come home. Come back to the Lord. I'm going to count to three right now. And at the count of three, you say those words. Say that simple prayer. God, reveal yourself to me. And after that, I'm going to pray over you. One, two, and three. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for every single person who responded with this prayer. And Lord, I know that, that truly their lives will never be the same again because you are with them. And to all those of you who responded, I want you to know that the Lord says this, you are His masterpiece. You are not an accident, you're not a mistake, you're not trash, you're not whatever you tell yourself, you are not whatever the people around you say about you. But today the Lord says this, He is with you. He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. And He wants to empower you to live for His glory and for His purpose. And you're going to see your life being transformed day by day because He is with you. So I set you apart. I bless you with the Lord's strength, with the Lord's courage. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We well, can look up at the screen right now and I'm just so happy for all those of you who prayed along and responded. You know, if you did that just now, i just like to say this to you. As you respond today, you are very much what we will call a spiritual baby. Why do we use that term? You know, a baby needs a family and a community to grow up and journey through life. Well, similarly, you need a spiritual family and community to help you journey through this part of your life as well. And we would like to be that family. We're serious about being this family. And so, if you responded in any way just now, I want you to head over to this URL on the screen. You've got a QR code there. You can scan it as well. It's fcbc.org.sg slash connect with us. We want you to connect with us because we're serious about being that family. So, if you responded in any way, go on there and respond. Even if you didn't do anything, you didn't pray out loud with me in the first prayer or the second prayer, you didn't even pray at all, you didn't do anything at all, but right now you know you must respond. Well, same thing. Go over to this website and respond there and we're going to get connected with you. And we're just so happy for you. Praise God. Well, church, as we close off this, this service, I, I was just led that we want to close off this time simply worshipping the Lord. Now, I'm sure many of us, we have to respond in our own way. If you need to respond, please respond. You need prayer, ask someone around you to pray for you, get in contact with someone from your cell group, they'll be happy to pray for you. Put it up in our live chat, people will be happy to pray for you over there as well. But I think it's very simple. I just sense that many of us, and, and myself included, during this time, we're all, we're all constantly trying to figure out how to adjust and how to respond to the different situations around us. And, and after all, we, we reach this place of some kind of stagnation. And we need to be revived. Maybe there's some of you here, as a leader, you've been feeling this, you know, like after all this time, you're feeling some stagnation in your ministry, some stagnation in yourself, or some of you are feeling some stagnation in your own spiritual walk, in your own spiritual growth. And we're at that place right now. But we need to today come before God and say, Lord, that's why we need your presence. That's why we need your spirit poured out upon us. That's why we need to be revived. Some of us today, we may be Christians, we may be leaders even, but we are that valley of dry bones. But today, God wants to breathe that new breath of life upon us. God's calling us to rise up. It's time for the spiritual awakening. It's time to get out of that spiritual stagnation and we're going to see a supernatural passion, a supernatural power, a supernatural presence of God in our lives. If you know you need to commit your own life in one way or another, you know you need to walk in holiness, you know you need to live in intimacy with the Lord, you know you need to commit to reach God and you know you've been, you've, you've been struggling in one of those areas, today come and respond. Ask the Lord to empower you, ask the Lord to help you in this area. And so right now, if if you could, let's all, let's all stand. If you want to respond on your knees or whatever, it is fine as well. But if not, let's stand up and, and just worship the Lord of this song. And as we do that, 
we're singing this song over our lives, over our own selves, our ministry, our people, our church, our nation. But let's come and let's worship the Lord and cry out to Him. There must be more than this O breath of God, come breathe within There must be more than this Spirit of God, we wait for you And fill us anew, we pray Fill us anew, we pray Consuming fire, fan into flame a passion for your name Spirit of God Would you fall in this place Lord have your way Lord have your way With us Come like a rushing wind Through us with power from on high Now set the captives free Leave us abandoned to your praise Lord let your glory fall Lord, let your glory fall, consuming fire, fan into flame, a passion for your name, Spirit of God, that you fall in this place, Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way. Consuming fire, fan into flame, a passion for your name, Spirit of God, to fall in this place. Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, a passion for your name. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, a passion for your name. Stir it up, stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, a passion for your name. Stir it up. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, Lord. Stir it up in our hearts, a passion for us. Consuming fire, fan into flame. A passion for your name, Spirit of God, would you fall in this place? Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way, sing, consuming fire, fan into flames, a passion for your name, Spirit of God. Fall in this place, Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way. Sing, consuming fire, fan into flame, a passion for your name, Spirit of God, would you 
fall in this place. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me lift up our hands to the Lord. And again, I want to speak these words over you. I pray that from God's glorious, unlimited resources, that He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. That Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. That the Lord's roots will grow down and you will grow deep in His love and you will be kept strong. May you have the power to understand how wide, how long, how high, how deep His love is for you. May you experience the love of Christ. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. And all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within you to accomplish infinitely more than you might ask or think. Church, in the name of Jesus, I declare these words over all of you. Lord, we want to see more of you in every aspect of our lives. Lord, we receive this and we pray that we will respond when you send us out to wherever it is that you are calling us to. So Lord, we thank you. We pray all this in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Our church, I trust that you've been, you've been blessed and I pray that you continue to grow in an anointing knowing that God has called you for a tremendous purpose. So may the Lord bless you abundantly. May He watch over you and your family. Stay safe and we'll catch you next weekend. God bless you.